Welcome to the Farmington Public Library. Today's craft is bookbinding, and specifically, we're going to be learning a type of bookbinding called Coptic stitch bookbinding. What's really excellent about the Coptic stitch binding method is that your book can lay completely flat. So it's really good for like a sketchbook, so that you can do drawings and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just very handy for all sorts of books. Especially, I like to use it for books that uh, I can find and pay for and print. Get the PDF online. Then I'll print it out and bind it this way. Today's craft kit is going to come in a manila envelope like this. And in the manila envelope, you are going to find a whole set of goodies here. There are some tools for book binding. So uh, we've got a, a simple ruler to make it easy for that. There will be one of either types of these, what are called bone folders. And these just help you fold your paper and get a good crisp crease. So you'll get one or the other of those. There will be an awl for punching holes in the paper. And then there will be two embroidery needles. One is just spare, just in case. You'll have some embroidery floss in a random color. There will be a front and back cover of some really nice cardstock, once again in a random color. And then there'll be a stack of paper for your pages. A couple more tools that will come in handy would be a pencil or a pen would work and then something to cut with. So in this case, I chose scissors. Okay, to start with, we want to take our paper and count out four sheets of paper. And we're going to form this into what we call a signature in the bookbinding world. So take those four sheets and we're gonna fold them in half. And we want them to line up pretty good. So it's a good idea to use something like the back of a countertop that you can kind of push into and, and make sure you get everything lined up straight as possible, right? I am using a, a special tool called a, a bench hook. But anything with a solid back that you can push against will work. And so once I get it creased with my fingers, then I'll go along with the bone folder and just really press that crease down good. So we're going to do that to, to all of the sheets until we have all of our signatures. And we've got enough in there for six signatures each. Uh, so 24 sheets of paper, four pieces of paper per signature. When you're doing this kind of book binding, you can use really just about any number of, of sheets up to say six. Two gets pretty thin and six gets pretty thick. So four is a good happy medium for doing this kind of book binding. So I will get the rest of my pages folded and be right back. Okay, I've got my six signatures all folded and ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna set these aside and we're actually gonna grab the, the manila folder that this came in and we're gonna make a, a marking tool here. So what we wanna do is with some scissors, we wanna cut out one of the sides here. We want to use this crease to create our tool. And so we want it to be at least as long as our, as our paper and, and a little bit longer actually helps. And maybe inch and a half deep. It's not critical. So now we have the side of our manila envelope cut out and we're going to cut a little notch up here and we want to come in from the side that's open and we want to cut down until we have maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Once again, it's not, it's not absolutely critical, but we just want to be able to get this so we can fold some little wings out. Like that. And then we want to take our ruler and our pencil 
Our paper is eight and a half inches wide. So what we want to do is measure that out onto our manila envelope so that we know what we're kind of working with. So line it up with the, the line that you cut where those tabs are. Just to, and this is more just to give us a good idea of how long we're going to be. So I've got that marked over there at eight and a half inches. Now what I want to do is decide kind of what pattern I want to do. Um, so I'm fond of this pattern. It's pretty easy to do. It looks nice where I've got three and three with a bigger space in between, but you can do all sorts of patterns. Like there's three sets of three, doesn't have to be three. Just uh, the more you do, kind of the, the stronger it is, but you can reach overkill pretty quick. This is plenty strong for anything you'd want. So for today's, we're just going to do something like this. And so we're going to come out, come in about an inch. And we're going to mark at one inch, two inches, and three inches. And then from the, our eight and a half mark over on this side, we're going to come in one inch from that. So it'll be, in this case, at the seven and a half, six and a half, and the five and a half. Those are going to be our marks. Now you'll notice on the cover, I have to come in a ways. So it's a good idea to be able to get all of those lined up. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw a line about, say, three eighths of an eighth. There you go, now you can see I've got a line three-eighths of an inch deep and pretty much straight into all of these marks. And so we're going to take our awl and this little foam pad here. Uh, another thing that works really well is a, a pink eraser. But I'm gonna just punch a hole right at the end of each one of those marks. Now that I have the hole at each one of the ends, I'm going to open up my fold and I'm going to do a hole right in that crease coming out. And the best way to do this is to line it up. It's going to be hard to show on camera, but line it up and you'll be able to kind of see where your point is and then just poke it out. Hopefully you can see there's a little hole there. It's easier for me to do it from the other side because I can line it up like this. Now if you end up really enjoying this style of bookbinding and you want to do more, it's a good idea to make this template out of something a little more um, rugged something a little stronger that'll last longer than the, this one piece of paper. All right. So now if I just kind of fold this, you'll see I've got basically three rows of holes all in parallel lines. And this little hook on the end, and the reason that we do that is because we take our signature, open it up to the center, we can drop our pattern into it, we go ahead and punch it all the way down into the bottom, and now we can take that hook you see here, and it, it prevents us from sliding too far into our signature. And now this is a pretty small little um, thing to, to hook onto, so a lot of times I'll use a like a block of cardboard that I've glued together like I did in the last video, but for this one I'm just going to use what I've got. 
So what we're going to do is poke a hole through the crease of our signatures. So at the angle that I'm doing this, I'm just kind of pushing through at a 45 degree angle so that I can get those holes right through the crease. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now I've got the holes that I need to sew this book together in this one signature. I'm going to continue on and finish the rest of the signatures and be right back. It's time to punch the holes in our covers. And now you'll see why I did the holes, the extra rows of holes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to line our cover up to the end that has the notch on it over here. And we'll take our awl and we're just going to punch through. This should give us a nice straight line of holes to do our binding with. And 3 eighths of an inch is, gives us a good amount of distance there so that we don't have to worry too much about tear out. Okay, I've got the holes punched in all of our signatures. So our next step is to put some thread on our needle. Now, you just want a comfortable length of thread on your needle for this. Uh, chances are the bigger the book you do, you're, you're going to have to um, add more as you go. And it's really easy to do. You just tie a knot in the inside of the book and continue on sewing. As you'll see, I'll show when we get to that point. So don't kill yourself trying to have too long of a thread here. Just whatever's a comfortable arm's length for you. Okay, so we're going to start with one signature and one of the covers. And I think I'm going to do that. The way we're going to start this is we're going to come out from the inside of our first signature. Leave yourself a tail there so that you can do a little bit of tying later. Um, I like to leave a good three inches. Some people will tie a knot in this to prevent it from pulling through but I am going to risk it. Now what we want to do is we come out through that hole and then we go over our cover and we want to pull that tight. We want to loop around we want to loop around that, pull it tight and then go back into that same hole that we just came out of. And it's important to really try to not split your thread as you're going back in on this one. We'll be able to tie it here in just a minute and then we don't have to worry about it being loose. But for now, we kind of need three pairs of hands. Okay, now from the inside, we go back, go to the next hole and then the back out again. And I'm going to repeat that process, trying not to let my string tangle. So once again, I, I, my string is out. I'm going to go over the top. And then I'm going to loop around the loop that I just created, pull it snug, and you kind of got to hold it. And then I'm going to go back in through that hole. Pull that taut. And now I'm going to come out the next hole. And I'm going to just continue this all the way across.
It's important to check occasionally and make sure you don't have any loops on the inside because they're easy to create and uh, easy to miss. About half of the books that I create, even after having done this for years, uh, end up with at least one loop somewhere inside that I miss. Okay, now we're at this last loop. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to loop around again, just like we did on all the others. But instead of going back into the signature we just came out of, we're going to grab a new signature. And we're going to go into the first hole on that. Now we're going to continue coming out the next hole. And this time when we loop around, we're going to loop around underneath the signature below. So instead of looping around, there's nothing to loop around here, right? So we're going to come down to this one that's below. And it may be easier for you um, with a straight needle to just put it in, open it up, come out the other way. And this is a lot easier than I make it look here with uh, a camera between me and the work. But once again, I'm going to pull it taut. And then, so I've already looped around. Now I'm going to go back in the same hole I just came out of, and that new signature. down this way, maybe show it to you. And then we're going to go out the next hole. We're going to go down one signature below. And hopefully be able to grab that. And loop around. Make sure it's snug before I go back into the same hole that I just came out of. And there's something that happens a lot. Is that you'll go back in, but your uh, needle will go underneath one of the next ones. There we go. Over to the next hole. Rinse and repeat. When you get to the end, you put on another signature and add it to the stack just like I did a minute ago. end. So I'm going to loop around the one below, grab the next signature, add it to my stack, and I'll go into that one. Once again, when you're pulling the uh, string tight, you don't want to pull against the paper, you want to pull in line with your paper fold. Otherwise you risk uh, ripping it out pretty bad. Okay, so now I've got, let's see if I can get this to where you see. So now I've got three signatures attached. What I'm going to do is just drop down to one below. I'm not going to keep going all the way down each time. So one signature below to loop under and I'm going to loop in between there.
Now you notice right here that I'm snugging it and I'm pulling directly away, but that's because I'm looped around the, the string itself. I'm not just hooked on the paper. So you can give a little bit of a tug there. Okay, now you can see that uh, I'm running out of my string here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that tail and I'm gonna measure out myself another chunk of the uh, embroidery floss and hopefully not create a giant tangle. And what I'm gonna do is just tie it off. And I want the knot to just appear to sit somewhere in between the two holes. And it could be in between any of these two holes. You just don't want it to be so close to one of the holes that it ends up pulling out of the hole. There we go. Now I'll put the other end, thread it onto the needle. I'm going to leave these ends long right now and I'll come back and trim them after I'm done with the book. And for anybody who doesn't remember from my last video, uh, one good method if you don't have a needle threader is to uh, wet the end of your thread and then pinch it between your fingers and then you slide the eye of the needle between your pinched fingers and it kind of locks that thread in place for you. All right. So now I'm just going to continue on. Okay, now we're on the last signature that we're going to use for our book, which means we also need to grab our cover that's going to go with it. We'll leave this side out. Now the difference is, so we just finished off with our last one there. We looped under, and now we would normally come up and go into the next signature. What we're going to do different here is we're going to come up over the cover, down <clears throat> and we're going to loop around one more time this kind of locks that cover in and then we're going to go into the signature that we just added the very last signature so before i put this needle in there wasn't anything holding that signature in there we're going to kind of rinse and repeat we're going to come out of the signature we're going to go down we're basically going to loop end up looping twice on this one some people don't do the double loop but i found that it kind of helps to lock that cover in The difference being that on the second loop around, we're going just below the signature that we just added rather than all the way down like we did on the first loop. Just helps to kind of lock it all in place.
Sometimes it can be hard to find that hole when you're going back in. Okay, now we're at the last hole on our book. So as we come out, we're going to do the same loop under for the first loop. And then over the top. The only real difference here is that once we get back inside, we're going to go back in that same hole. And then we're going to tie it off. back in the same hole we just came out of. And now all we want to do is tie off our last bit here. And do a couple. Then we'll trim off our excess, leaving about a quarter of an inch. And then make sure you do the same on the knot on the front of the book. That first one, you'll just tie that off. And then any place that you spliced new string on, like here, just trim those down to about a quarter of an inch as well. That way they're not sticking out in the way. And there you go, you've created a really nice Coptic stitch binding notebook. It can be used for sketch pad, note taking, drawings, you know, whatever you want to do. And you don't have to use blank uh, printer paper, you could use like all sorts of different art paper, watercolor paper, drawing paper, you know, there's all sorts of different papers um, for the artists out there and uh, so you can really make this a special and memorable either present or just a gift for yourself so lots of fun things that you can do